Lord and say, Sons, what must I do to be saved? I want you to keep note of the words of the jailer. He uses two strong words. Number one, must. Number two, save. When the word must is used, it simply means the most important and the only requirement. No plan B, no option B, because he's asking them, Sons, what must I? What must I? Is there anything that I must do so that I can go to heaven? Is there anything that I must do so that I can see the kingdom of God? Is there anything that I must do so that I don't go to hell? The word saved. He says, what must I do to be saved? The word saved simply means being delivered from the powers of eternal damnation. Never going to hell again. You know, when we are doing our soul winning, sometimes when we ask people what they understand by the word saved, people will give you different dimensions. Others will tell you to be saved is to dress well. To be saved is to stop smoking. To be saved is to be a good person. To be saved is to pray every day. But brothers and sisters, even without referring to the scriptures, the word saved comes from the word saved. It's an action. And only a powerful personality, a powerful subject, a powerful power can save you where you are helpless. Say for example, if I was in my house, and my house was on fire, at that point in time, I cannot deliver myself. I am in risk of dying. What will happen unto me? I'll begin screaming, calling for help. And whoever will come and secure me out of that trouble will be called my savior with regards to that situation. This man is asking Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? What is the requirement? The must requirement that I'm supposed to do so that I never go to hell. So if you are hearing me right, this is the point. This is a man who is asking a question to Paul and Silas because he does not want to go to hell because of his sins. Number one, in that question, he realizes that he's in danger of going to hell. You know when you begin to ask someone, what must I do to, to be saved? What must I do to go to heaven? It begins from you being informed that, hey, you are in danger. The probability, the chances of you going to hell are high. Any sin that you have ever committed in your life is enough to take you to hell. It's not about a big sin. It's not about a small sin. No. Any sin that you've ever committed in your life and you are still in that condition, you have not come to a point of asking Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? You have not come to a point of agreeing to speak to our soul winners, agreeing to speak to Pastor Paul, agreeing to look out for the truth. That sin is a just enough to take So my name is James, my brother Deno. Okay. So sister, do you go to church? I do. What? PCA. PCA? Yeah. What, what is the central? Presbyterian. Oh, oh, Presbyterian, okay. That's wonderful. But uh, more important than church is going to heaven, right? Okay. What do you believe somebody has to do to go to heaven? Get saved. Mm -hmm. Be I, righteous. Being righteous. Mm -hmm. Okay. Receiving Jesus Christ as a personal savior. Right. Yeah. So are, are those uh, getting saved and being righteous, is that the same thing? Not really. Okay. Righteous, you can say to be a good person. Right, right. 
So like um like if I was to come to you and say, sister, um, I have cancer okay. and I can die anytime, but I'm scared of going to hell. What did you tell me I have to do to go to heaven? You have cancer? No, it's an example. Uh -huh. it's, it's, it's an illustration. Okay. So like if I was saying, sister, help me out. Show me from the Bible what I have to do to go to heaven. What did you, what did you tell me or show me? Like, would you tell me, repent of all your sins? Would you tell me, just believe on Jesus? Would you tell me, what, what did you tell me? Well, of course, the first thing you do is repent. Mm. Because to men, for the longest time ever, Jesus is coming back. But you know, we don't know when he's coming back. Right. And you're like, this is my last time. Right. This is my last sins on earth. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what do I do? The first thing is to repent and maybe you'll meet Jesus from there. Okay. Okay, thank you for your answer. Let me show you something. Okay. All right. Uh, this is your son? Yeah, this is my son. All right. Okay. Um, Romans chapter 3, verse 10, the Bible says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Uh -huh. The Bible is saying nobody is righteous. In That's other true. words, nobody is perfect. Yeah. So if we were to go to heaven by being perfect or being righteous, nobody would go. Uh -huh. And why is that? Verse 23, for all have sinned okay. and come short of the glory of God. I'm a sinner, he's a sinner, he's a sinner. Mm. If we were to go to heaven by stopping sin, by turning from sin, or by living a righteous life, nobody would go. The only person in heaven would be God. Because let, me, let, me, let me show you an example of a sin. Revelation 21.8 says, But the fearful and unbelieving, let me jump down, and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burn for and brimstone, which is second death. So according to the Bible, lying is a sin, and it's enough to take you to hell. Have you ever lied before? So many times. Me too, me too, me too. So according to the Bible, nobody deserves to go to heaven. But there's some good news, because the Bible says Romans 5, 8. Uh, but God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. So, so even though me, I'm a sinner, and I deserve to go to hell, just that for me anyway out of love, because I can't go to heaven by myself. And then he told us how we go to heaven, Acts 16.30, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? In other words, what must I do to go to heaven, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 31, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Mm -hmm. So how do you go to heaven? You believe on Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah? But notice, does it say, repent of your sins? Mm -hmm. It says, believe. Mm -hmm. Do you know John 3.16? For God so loved the world. Yeah, yeah. Please, yeah, please say it. For God so loved the world. Yeah. That he gives you his only begotten son, uh -huh. that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. You, you quoted it perfectly. So according to that verse, how do you get everlasting life? You believe. Exactly. Exactly. Notice it doesn't say whosoever repents of all his sins. Because repenting of all his sins would mean that you have to, you are a liar and you stop lying. Yeah. You used to steal, now you don't steal. Mm -hmm. You used to drink, now you don't drink. That's difficult for a lot of people. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So God made it easy because he loves you. Yes, he says, just believe in my son. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Yeah. Verse 15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have yes. eternal life. Yeah. Eternal life. It means the same thing. So let me ask you, according to verse 15, how do you get eternal life? You believe. Exactly. Exactly. Same chapter, verse 36. He that believeth on the son hath everlasting life. You believe in Jesus, Son of God, what do you get immediately? Everlasting life. Exactly, eternal life. Same thing. Let's keep reading. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life by the wrath of God abideth on him. You believe, everlasting life. You don't believe, you don't have life, and God's wrath is on you, meaning you're going to hell. So in other words, the Bible is saying heaven is for believers, and hell is for? Non-believers. Exactly. Exactly. Um, um, uh, let, me, let me go to the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 1. Ephesians 1. Sorry, I'm taking, I'm taking time here. All right, here we go. Ephesians 1.13, the Bible says, In whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Once you believe, once you believe in Jesus, what happens to you? The Holy Spirit comes upon you and he seals you. That's how you get everlasting life, through the sealing of the Holy Spirit. And how did you get sealed? Exactly. John 1, 12, the Bible says, But as many as received him, those that received Jesus, what happens to them? To them gave, to them, uh, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. If you receive Jesus, you get born again, right? And how do you get born again? Even to them that? Believe. On his name. So how do you get born again? 
How do you get how do you get everlasting life? Mm-hmm. How do you get eternal life? How do, you, how do you get sealed by the Holy Spirit? Spirit. Exactly. Why? Because according to the Bible, salvation is by faith alone. Faith alone. Then, then, but then, you might ask yourself, what happens when a believer commits sin? Uh, Hebrews, Hebrews 12, 6, the Bible says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Chastens means to beat or to discipline. Do you discipline someone for doing good things or bad things? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So this is about a believer that does bad things. What does God do to him? He disciplines him. For, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges every time he receiveth. Verse 7. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? So let's talk about a believer that does bad things. What does God do to him? He chastens him, he disciplines him. Like the way you discipline your kids. When they do bad things, you punish them, right? But they'll always be your kids. Nothing will ever stop them from being your kids. Same way with us. We have everlasting life. Nothing can stop us from being God's kids. So when we commit bad things, discipline. discipline. Big sin, big punishment, small sin, small punishment. But we'll always be his kids. Why? Because we have everlasting life. Okay? Do you have any, do you have any questions? Not really. Yeah, All, right. Fine. All right. So l- let's finish. Eh? Um, according to the Bible, what must you do to be saved? Believe. Amen. I agree with you. Can a believer go to hell? <laughs> You're so quick to answer. No. A believer can go to hell. I agree with you, but why? Because the believer believes in Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The Son of God. Mm-hmm. And God promised if you believe in Jesus Christ, perish. Exactly. Exactly. I agree with you 100%. If a believer commits sin, what does God do to him? Punish. Exactly. Big sin, big punishment, small sin. Small Ex- last question. If a believer, if someone that has everlasting life kills himself, will he go to heaven or hell? I don't know. <laughs> All right, let me, let, me, let me help you out. But he believed. But he believed, yeah, exactly. He Are you sure? I think so. Okay, I agree. You're, you're correct. You're correct. You're correct. <laughs> I was a believer. Yeah. I don't know the reason why this person took his own life. Yeah. Like, do you know King Saul? Yeah, I know. Do you know he killed himself? Yeah. Do you know the Bible says he was a believer? Yeah. Where do you think he is right now? In heaven. I agree with you. He is in heaven. And let me, but let me show you what happens to people who commit suicide. Uh, Romans 5, verse 19, the Bible says, I was talking to believers, huh? Mm-hmm. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. One of the Ten Commandments is thou shalt not kill, right? If you're committing suicide, you're killing yourself. So you're breaking the commandment, right? Yeah. So let's see what happens to you. And shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. So what happens when you commit suicide? When you go to heaven, you're called the least. But you still go there, why? Because you have everlasting life. Yeah. Amen. Believe. Because you believed. And God promised you everlasting life. So let's finish. Uh, Romans 10, verse 9. It says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him, Jesus, from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So the Bible is saying, If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he, that he died for your sins, and that he rose again, you're saved. Your salvation is based on your faith, yeah. not on your actions. Yeah. Your salvation is based on what you believe, mm-hmm. not on what you do. Mm-hmm. But the evidence that you believe, the Bible says, verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You believe, you call, you get saved. What do you have to call? Verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You believe, you confess, then Jesus sends the Holy Spirit and he seals you. And if you commit sins, you're punished. So you believe, you confess, you get everlasting life through the sinning of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And if you commit sins, you'll be punished. Yeah. But the day you die, where will you go? Heaven. So you believe in your heart, and you confess with your mouth, and you confess through prayer. Yeah. So, sister, I would like to lead you in prayer. Okay. Uh, please say, uh, Dear Lord Jesus, I know, I know that I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to go to hell. But please save me right now and give me everlasting life through faith alone. Amen. Santisana.